At AEW's Full Gear 2021, Hangman Adam Page won the AEW World Heavyweight Championship from Kenny Omega in a match that took you on an emotional roller coaster, and it was one of the most wholesome and satisfying moments in wrestling history. Watching Hangman win the AEW World Championship left everyone like this. And then followed by tears, but we'll get to that eventually. About two months prior to Full Gear, I released a video about the story of Hangman Adam Page so far in AEW, which received a lot of love and this is the follow up video to that one, so if you haven't watched the first one, it is highly recommended that you do so, so that this video makes more sense. But basically we're just going to pick up right where we left off. So we left off at the point where Kenny Omega and the Elite beat the crap out of Hangman, the Dark Order tried to come out for the save, but Stu Grayson and Evil Uno of the Dark Order held the rest of the Dark Order back in an effort to respect Hangman's wishes to give him some space. This segment rode Hangman off TV for a while and this left many people wondering why Hangman was not on TV especially since he was in a hot angle with Kenny Omega. But it was later revealed that Hangman took a hiatus from AEW because his wife was pregnant and about to give birth and sometime during Hangman's hiatus he welcomed a baby boy into the world. But in Hangman's absence the Dark Order began to crumble. The Dark Order was torn as half of the faction believed that they should not have left Hangman to get beat up by the Elite and the other half believed that they did the right thing by leaving Hangman to get beat up by the Elite. And this animosity manifested on TV as the Dark Order got into a big pushing match after they lost a the match. It seemed like Hangman was the missing piece in the Dark Order and was the unlikely glue that kept them together because without him, they were in disarray. They eventually made up in Brody Lee's hometown of Rochester, New York, but they were still missing one important piece of their group. Around the same time, Tony Khan announced the AEW Casino ladder match, with the winner getting a shot at Kenny Omega's AEW World Heavyweight Championship. And in this match, an unknown participant would be revealed, and they were known as the Joker. And before this match, speculation was rife about who could be the Joker, as some people speculated it was former WWE stars or current top New Japan pro wrestling stars. But despite all these names floating around, there was someone who everybody wanted in that ladder match. A certain someone whose name they couldn't get off their tongue. A certain someone who everybody knew deserved another shot at the AEW World Championship. And that someone was Hangman Adam Page. And surprise, surprise. Oh, surprise, surprise, motherfucker! The king is back! Hangman Adam Page was the Joker, and this popped the crowd like crazy. In my last video, I mentioned that Hangman has the unique ability to tell a story with his eyes, and just by looking into his eyes, you could tell that something was very, very different about Hangman. Hangman had a certain fire in his eyes that said that he's back to claim what he deserves, and in his eyes, you could see that he finally believed in himself. And him and John Moxie were brawling at the top of the ladder, and Moxie fell off because he was dazed, and Hangman grabbed the poker chip suspended above the ring with undiluted awe in his eyes and won the casino ladder match and cracked open a beer on top of the ladder and looked over the crowd which might as well have been the whole world. Hangman had the world championship in his grasp but the question is can he capture it? And the following week on Dynamite, Hangman cut a promo in the middle of the ring in which he brought up all of his failures like the losses that he's taken in AEW and he said that he lost his confidence, friends and at some point himself. But despite those things, no matter how much he lost, there were always people chanting cowboy sh**. And Hangman goes on to list all the things that constitute cowboy sh**, like winning the tag team titles with Kenny Omega, or learning to let the past be the past and accepting new friends into his life, which is a reference to the Dark Order. He also said to fall off your horse and get back on and blaze on ahead is 100% cowboy sh**, and this was to huge ovation as the crowd continually chanted cowboy sh**. And he doesn't know how Full Gear will end, but he feels like everybody believes in him and for the first time in his life, he believes in himself. And this promo was very reminiscent of the first cowboy sh** promo that he cut in the build up to Full Gear 2019 in one of the early Dynamite episodes, in which he basically said the same thing. Full Gear! I'm gonna do some real cowboy shit! At this point in 2019, Hangman was a relatively new face to the AEW audience and he was still trying to truly get over, but this is a great parallel on Hangman's story and is testament to how far he's come in AEW. But anyway, back to 2021, the following week after Hangman's promo, Kenny Omega cut a backstage promo and he said that Hangman was fooling everybody into thinking he was a person that he wasn't and he knows the real Hangman and he knows that Hangman can't sleep at night because he's afraid of failure and that if people knew the real Hangman, 
they know that he's a coward. Kenny Omega knows Hangman's insecurities and he knows how much they debilitate and cripple Hangman so he tries to rub them in so that once again Hangman crumbles. But the question is, will Hangman fall for Kenny Omega's tricks again? Later on in the show, Hangman goes to the Dark Order for the first time in a while in a backstage segment and he apologizes for leaving the group in the way that he did and he thanks them for everything that they did in his sake. The Dark Order then jovially accepts all of Hangman's apologies and pardons him for everything. Hangman then goes on to say that next week, the Dark Order is booked in a match against the Elite and since he knows the Elite, he knows that they're going to dress up so the Dark Order might as well dress up as well. And immediately John Silver says he wants to dress up as Bambi. Never change John Silver. And guess what? Johnny Hungy! <laughs> and this set up the 8 man tag team match at the Halloween edition of AEW Dynamite. And of course John Silver came dressed as Bambi. Johnny Hungy! <laughs> and the Elite came dressed as the Ghostbusters with Michael Nakazawa as a giant Bebe and an unknown person as the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man also from the Ghostbusters series. And at the end of the match, there was one of those moments that could only happen in pro wrestling, where the guy in the foreground of the camera shot is oblivious to the looming danger that's standing right behind him. And guess who was revealed as the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man? You guessed it. It was Japanese deathmatch legend Dr. Luther. Yeah, the paper that's work. cap. Totally cap. That means lie. No, but for real though, it was Hangman Adam Page. And the crowd went nuts at this revelation. And Hangman proceeded to lay Matt Jackson out and give Kenny Omega a dead eye. And this all caused the Dark Order to win. And after the match, Hangman and the Dark Order happily embraced in the middle of the ring for the first time in months. And cracked open a beer as the elite embarrassingly walked to the back. And this just felt so good to see, especially after all that Hangman and the Dark Order had been through. It was great to see them reconciling and connecting once again. The following week, Kenny Omega defeated Alan Angels of the Dark Order and after the match, he was once again back at his bastard heel antics and he set up Alan Angels for a one-winged angel onto a chair. And just as Kenny Omega was about to hit the one-winged angel, Hangman Adam Page's music hit to a huge reaction. And just as Kenny Omega was about to whack Hangman with the chair, Alan Angels knocked it out of his hand and Hangman tried to hit Kenny Omega with a buckshot lariat, but Kenny Omega dodged and rolled out the ring. And he left the coveted AEW World Championship alone alone with Hangman in the ring. Hangman was face to face with his destiny and as Hangman picked up the thing that he's been clamoring for for so long, the visual of this just felt so right. So Hangman told Kenny to hold on tight to the AEW World Championship because he's got 10 days to do so. And this interaction was an indication that we were seeing the most confident version of Hangman heading into full gear. And the following week on the Dynamite just before full gear, Hangman and Kenny had a contract signing for their match. Hangman signed the contract first and then Kenny Omega hopped on the mic and he said that it was sad when Hangman left the Elite because they were like family and he said that he and the Elite were always the ones to pick Hangman up from his sorrows. And he did those things because he saw a little bit of himself in Hangman and then he proceeds to call Hangman a disappointment. Hangman then brings up the fact that Kenny Omega has talked down on him for years but at one point in time he also had a tag team partner that he felt he didn't measure up to either. And this is a reference to Kota Ibushi who was in a tag team with Kenny Omega called the Golden Lovers and their story is honestly just as tumultuous and complex and I'll eventually cover it one day. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that and leave a like if you haven't already. But anyway, Hangman said that Kenny Omega has surpassed Ibushi now and has become the god of pro wrestling and he tells Kenny that he's always told him lies to belittle him. But the biggest lie that he told Hangman was at AEW's full gear 2020 after Kenny Omega beat him in the middle of the ring and he leaned over Hangman and said, good job Hanger, I'm proud of you. Hangman said that Kenny Omega was never ever proud of him and that he was always afraid of him. He was afraid that Hangman would surpass him if the feeding of failure lit a fire under Hangman's ass. Hangman said that Kenny was afraid to let Hangman realize his potential, just like how Kenny did when he was in Japan when he was feeding inferior to Kota Ibushi. Hangman said that Kenny Omega was afraid to let Hangman redeem himself because that could possibly mean that Hangman is better than Kenny. And this is when it hit me. What? 
What if Kenny Omega has been the insecure one all along? He was insecure about Kota Ibushi being better than him and even though he overcame his insecurities to become the top dog of New Japan Pro Wrestling, when he got to AEW, the so called god of pro wrestling was seemingly exposed. Remember that Kenny Omega took three major pay per view losses at the start of AEW, which caused a lot of people to say that he's a shell of his former self and that led him to lose his confidence and that caused him to team up with a similarly low confidence hangman. Remember that Hangman was the one who was expected to turn heel in their feud, but Kenny Omega was the one who actually turned heel in their feud. Could Kenny Omega's big bad machismo act of being the invincible god of pro wrestling all just be an act to cover up his own insecurities and his own fear of failure? Could Kenny Omega's constant bringing up of Hangman's failures be aroused to make sure that Hangman doesn't realize his potential? In Kenny Omega and Hangman's feud, Kenny Omega has used a common tactic used by those who want to maintain their power over others. If you put someone down enough, they will never ever think highly enough of themselves to usurp the person who is quote unquote superior, even if the quote unquote inferior person has all their capabilities to be better or even surpass the person in power. Like I said before, Hangman has fallen for Kenny's bait many many times before, but the question is, will Hangman fall for it again? And the answer is no. Hangman sees through all of Kenny Omega's tricks. Kenny Omega tries to justify himself by saying he only did it because he cares about Hangman, which is probably true to some extent, but Kenny Omega proves otherwise when he shakes Hangman's hand and belittles him one more time by saying, good job Hangman, I'm proud of you. Just like he did at Full Gear 2020. And then in disguise, Don Callis proceeded to hit Hangman with a camera, which led to Hangman getting busted open. And Kenny Omega signing the contract with blood. The con contract being signed in blood is apropos considering the weighty and dense history of their feud. This segment revealed a part of Kenny Omega that I and many other people had never really thought about and soon I'm going to release a video that critically analyzes the character of Kenny Omega. But anyway, on the AEW Rampage before AEW's full gear, Hangman confronted the Young Bucks for the first time in a long time and he apologized for acting like an ass and costing them a shot at the AEW tag team titles. And him being the first person to apologize speaks volumes of his character. Character. And he says that if the Young Bucks do so much as lay a finger on him on Saturday at Full Gear, he will personally ruin them. One interesting parallel to note here is that once upon a time, Hangman invited the Young Bucks to be at ringside for his world title match against Chris Jericho at All Out 2019, but now he's asking them to stay as far away as possible in his world title match. And another great parallel to note here is that Hangman is wearing the same shirt that he was wearing when he cost the Young Bucks a tag team title opportunity and when the Young Bucks kicked him out of the Elite. When the Young Bucks kicked Hangman out of the Elite, they said that he's changed, but looking at these pictures side by side, you can clearly see who's changed. Just like Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks changed and they turned heel so that they could win championships and keep those championships. But Hangman has stayed his same old cowboy self. The storytelling in this feud is quite literally off the charts. In the words of Vincent Kennedy McMahon, This is such good shit. And so the stage was set at AEW's Full Gear 2021. Kenny Omega versus Hangman Adam Page for the AEW World Championship. Before Hangman comes out to the ring, a clip plays of a camera zooming through the streets of Minneapolis and onto a dead-eyed and focused Hangman. And the camera follows him through the streets while Hangman's failures play on billboards and buildings. And what was playing was all the times that Hangman fell off his horse, but now he's back on his horse and he's arrived at the target center. And he knows what he must do, as over 10,000 people are waiting for him to do just that. His music hits and the crowd goes nuts and the energy in the crowd is tangible as the crowd show how much they believe in Hangman. Even the graphics team write that they believe in Hangman. This is Hangman's night. He has to win the world title tonight, right? Well, that's if he can beat the god of pro wrestling who's held the AEW World Championship for a record 346 days, Kenny Omega, who walks out to a chorus of boos. And you can see it in his face that he's not playing tonight and he means business. In many ways, Kenny Omega is the final boss of AEW. And if Hangman can win against Kenny Omega, then he's proved himself holy and redeemed himself. But can Hangman channel his feelings to help him win against his biggest rival and one-time close best friend? The match starts and Kenny Omega is in control for the early stages as him and Don Callis' underhanded tactics really helps them to get an advantage. Cause as soon as Hangman starts to get control over the match, Don Callis interferes or Kenny Omega cheats. And in this way, Kenny Omega stays on top. Kenny Omega even trolls the crowd at one point by feigning like he's going to hit Hangman with a buckshot lariat. But then he doesn't. 
What a troll. You must be one of them trolls, huh? No, yeah, no. he a troll. He a troll. Hangman slowly starts to get control in the match, and the match is very much like a tug of rope out as the control shifts between the two men. And Kenny Omega is using a lot of cowardly tactics to get an advantage. It's funny how Kenny Omega said that Hangman was a coward before, but he's the one showing cowardice in this match. At one point, Hangman even considers cheating as well by hitting Kenny Omega over the head with the AEW belt. But just like at AEW Revolution 2020, he does not succumb to his demons. Hangman knows who he is. Even though he was confused at one point, he's always known who he is. Something was very different about Hangman in this match. He had an undeniable fighting spirit that we'd never really seen before in AEW. And towards the end of the match, when Kenny Omega attacks him, he yells F you and no you don't mother f but then the Young Bucks come out and the plot thickens. And just as Hangman is about to give Kenny Omega a buckshot lariat, Nick Jackson with anguish in his eyes has the opportunity to grab Hangman's leg and cost him the world title. Just like how Hangman grabbed Nick's leg and cost the Young Bucks a shot at the AEW World Tag Team Championships. And Nick Jackson just stands there, seemingly frozen in time. And this gives Hangman the opportunity to give a buckshot lariat to Kenny Omega's back. And then Hangman goes to the other side of the ring to set up a second buckshot Larry and Matt Jackson follows him to the other side of the ring and looks Hangman dead in the eye and gives him a slight nod of approval. Almost as if to say, go on Hangman, I know we've done a lot to hurt each other but you deserve this. You must remember that the Young Bucks do not hate Hangman. The animosity between the Young Bucks and Hangman was just a product of Hangman wanting to leave the elite and the Young Bucks reluctant to let him leave. In other words, it was just a product of friends having a disagreement, of which the disagreement blew to proportions outside of their control. The Young Bucks still care about Hangman, and this was reflected in being the elite when Matt Jackson was outside of the Dark Order's lair watching Hangman have fun with the Dark Order, almost like he wanted to go in, but he was holding himself. And this is a great great parallel to when Hangman was outside of the elite's room wanting to go in but held himself. It's also interesting to note here that the Young Bucks turned heel a few days after this happened, so it's quite evident that this had an impact on Matt and Nick Jackson, because at the end of the day, they care about Hangman. But anyway, after the Young Bucks allow Hangman to fairly continue on with the match, Hangman buckshot lariats Kenny Omega for the Adam Page has fulfilled his destiny and has become the AEW World Champion. The crowd goes crazy. After Hangman pins Kenny, he immediately holds Kenny and tells him something in his ear, which is also a great parallel to what Kenny Omega did at Full Gear 2020. And as Hangman got the AEW World Championship handed over to him, he looked deeply into the AEW World Championship with emotion. And just like that, he had become king. He had overcome his demons, overcome the odds, and become the World Champion. The Dark Order then came out and congratulated Hangman and offered him a beer, but then Hangman took the beer and threw it to the side and embraced the Dark Order instead. It was never ever about the alcohol, it was about the friends that he made along the way and they hoist Hangman in the air as the pay-per-view closed. As soon as Hangman won the AEW World Championship, I and I'm sure many others were in tears and I couldn't stop crying for a while. Hangman's story reminds you of why you fell in love with the medium of pro wrestling in the first place. Hangman's story took place over the span of years and resonated with so many people because of how real and relatable it really is. At the base level, Hangman's story is a story of millions of people around the world who are broken down and beaten down by the weight of the world and it is representative of those who are struggling to get by and run away from their problems, either through substances or through other means, and those who don't believe in themselves, and those who have a crippling fear of failure, Hangman's story shows us that even though the thoughts in your head are sometimes your worst enemy, you should never ever give up and you should keep moving forward, no matter how hard it gets, as every dog has its day. Even though Hangman fell off the saddle more than a few times and was lower than low more than a few times, he picked himself up every single single time and got back onto the saddle of his horse. And that's what's important because he never gave up and achieved his wildest dreams. And I know you can too, because that's some cowboy sh
Thank you for watching the video. Covering Hangman's story has been a blast. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and consider following me on my socials. But anyway, thank you again so, so much for watching, and see you next time. Goodbye, you jobbers.